Hi, Mitch Bailey here. I want to talk about refrigerants. <laughs> now, you may have heard or not heard that uh, we've had to switch to uh, new A2L refrigerants for our equipment because the manufacturers, the AIM Act, uh, dictated that we can't use R410A anymore because it's got too high a global warming potential. I did a video about this last year trying to get customers to move forward if they're going to change their equipment because they could save several thousand dollars because the new equipment was going to be more expensive for the stuff that we actually had to include in them. Well, that being said, um, <laughs> I'm, uh, uh, it, we've now started to make the switch. The equipment now is we're running out of 410A equipment. It's almost gone. In fact, if you have a piece of 410A equipment that's offered to you, take it. That's going to be a much better bet for you than R454B right now because the two refrigerants we had to switch to was R54B or R32 depending on the manufacturer. Most of the U.S. manufacturers are using R454B. It is a blend of refrigerant. It is 69%, uh, 68.9% R32 and R1234YF uh, which is a refrigerant they use in automobiles. That's what they're using your autos for uh, uh, your cooling system. It's a blend of those two refrigerants, 31.1 and 68.9% or let's just say 69 and 31% of those two refrigerants are blended together. Okay. Well, they've, they don't have enough of it. They, they, uh, there is a shortage of it right now. What does that mean? That means that I, even if I could buy a jug of R454B, it will cost me close to $800 for that jug. And that's a 20-pound jug. So you can do the math. That's $40 a pound to me. By the time I've come out and put it in your system, we're looking at least $300 if I have to add refrigerant to your system uh, for R454B. Will it come down in price? It will when we have more refrigerant available. It's a supply and demand thing. Uh, the R32 that's in this R54B is also, some manufacturers have switched to just R32. And R32 is a single component refrigerant. It's not a blend. What does that mean? Well, that refrigerant means that if I leak out the R32 refrigerant in my system, if that happens to leak out, I can just add more R32, fix the leak, add more R32. I can't do that with R454B. Same thing with R410A. We weren't supposed to just add refrigerant if it leaked out. We were supposed to take it out. Why? Because the two refrigerants, the blend of refrigerants, what the components are made of, one of them boils at a higher or a lower temperature than the other one. So in a leak uh, type scenario, more of one refrigerant may be leaking out than the other. And if it's more than 10% of the charge is lost, you're supposed to recover the whole, all the refrigerant and charge it with new virgin, R, R, virgin R454B refrigerant and charge it completely up because now the mix maintains that 69, 31%. Otherwise, that will go off and you won't get the same efficiency and capacity of the system. Because there is a shortage, most of the equipment that we get currently has a, a, a R54B charge added to it that's added at the factory for the unit itself and a line set of approximately 15 feet. Anything longer than that, we're supposed to add refrigerant. Well, because there's a shortage, most of the manufacturers now have sent out a letter and or an email saying, look, we're, we're going to pre-charge these with more refrigerants because there's a lack of refrigerant we understand. Now, where did the lack or the shortage come up? A lot of, I've seen a few internet, watched a few YouTube videos from a couple other people. And yeah, uh, you know, they, they say it's because of the valve. They don't have enough of these valves to put in there. They've had years to prepare for this. They've had more than a year to prepare for this. And you're trying to tell me it's what it is. Now, I'm going to give you two words. What I actually think it is. BlackRock, okay? BlackRock. BlackRock owns Chemcore. Uh, uh, and what they do is, they, because they own them, the ones that manufacture and they have the royalties to R454B, is this a man-made shortage? I don't know, but it looks awful damn suspicious to me. That being said, if I come to you as a customer and say, hey, I, I think we should use this R32 unit, it's going to be probably your best choice. I'm going to point you to what I think you should use because the R32 refrigerant, I can buy a jug of it for a third the cost of uh, uh, R454B, even if I could get a jug, and I can't even, we can't even get them right now. They will not sell you a jug of R54B unless you are buying equipment from them, and 
most manufacturers, they just tell us we don't have any. We don't have any R54B, uh, most of our supply houses. So this is a, a something you should consider. Weigh all your options when you're changing out a piece of equipment. Make sure that, you know, the refrigerant sh is available. Will this change? Will this change in the future? R54B would be a good choice. That being said, R32 is a higher efficiency and is a single component refrigerant. I think R32 is a good choice. My problem, most of the manufacturers we use currently, Ring, Rude, uh, uh, Bryant, uh, 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 Train, American Standard, you name the U.S. manufacturer, they have switched to R454B. So I'm kind of stuck using them if I want to use that piece of equipment. If you're, um, you know, want to uh, train, I got to put an R54B in. They don't have R32. Daikin, however, has R32, and they're good equipment. I would set it in my house uh, if I if that's all I could get was R uh, R32. I would set Daikin equipment. Would I prefer to put a train in? Yes. Would I prefer to put a Ream Rude as opposed to the Daikin? Maybe. They're about the same equivalent in the capacity and efficiencies of them. So think about what you're going to do if you're going to change out your system. I'm going to give you several options. Uh, you contractors and techs out there, you should be doing the same thing. You should be giving your customers all the options. And it might be better that they actually switch to an R32 unit like a Daikin, a Goodman, or an Amana. Uh, as opposed to using a train, a Linux, or a carrier system. Um, that might be their best bet currently to do that because that refrigerant is available. Um, the other thing, R32 refrigerant, Daikin actually makes the refrigerant. And yes, the R32 is a major component, 69% of R454B. It does not have the, the royalty. It's royalty-free. They're not they're allowing people just to make, if you want to make that refrigerant and you're a chemical company, you can make that refrigerant. So, you know, do your due diligence, check it out, make sure you're pretty informed on what your equipment is and what your choices are. Don't just swap out that equipment just because it's a lower price, because it may be upfront lower price for that piece of equipment. If you can, you might want to switch to R32, and if the 410A of equipment is available, take it. Get it before it's gone, and that refrigerant's going to be around for another 30 years because we're going to use reclaimed and recovered refrigerants to, to add back into that, that system, even though they're going to ban making it, we could still use recovered and recycled refrigerant in our systems, and that 410A will still be available 30 years from now. All right, I hope you liked the video. Please like and subscribe, and if you want to leave any comments, I would be happy to answer them. If you have any questions, I have to answer them. So please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and see you on the next one.